バイオニックダンス Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. I've been teasing a big animation project for months now, and I've finally finished the script, which means it's time to put out a casting call. The animation is called Quinn Redshift, and it's actually a prologue to a much larger story that'll probably turn into a webcomic. I'm not Pixar, I'm just one schmuck with a small render farm, and this project is already pretty huge as it is, so I'm not gonna animate all of it. It's being done in a very retro pulp space opera style, like Captain Video, Tom Corbett, and the Jetsons, all rings around everything and fins on spaceships, stylized pictures of ringed planets and atoms on clothing, that kind of thing. A lot of people who've seen the preliminary art made comparisons to Futurama, but Futurama is derived from that same pulp style. If you're expecting hard sci fi from Quinn Redshift, prepare to be disappointed. My philosophy in storytelling is to keep the canon consistent, but fun will always take precedence over real science, a stylistic choice that has fallen by the wayside in the last few decades, alas. Most of today's science fiction is a real stick up its butt, taking itself way too seriously and trying too hard to conform to actual. Science. In fact, I'm quite certain that the science of the Quinverse will quite deeply offend those who insist their sci fi conform to reality. Despite the kitschy, old school style, however, Quinn Redshift is not a comedy. The characters take themselves and the fictional world in which they live completely seriously. The most common reaction to this visual style is to immediately assume it to be parody or satire, but I love the look and find it tragic that it's never done without the assumption that the movie or show will be tongue in cheek rather than straight up storytelling. Now, down to business. I have Five roles which have yet to be filled. This is the main character, Quinn Redshift. He's a space explorer, much in the style of Buzz Lightyear or Spaceman Spiff. Bombastic, heroic delivery of his lines is essential. Channel your best old school Superman impression. Imagine if Zap Brannigan wasn't a parody. Draw a Venn diagram around all of these examples and see where they overlap. That's Quinn Redshift. This is Rhea. She's one of Quinn's best friends from when they were cadets. She now owns her own security company, and she's coming along with Quinn for this particular adventure. She has a strong sense of duty and loyalty to her friends and employees, and for the greater good. She may technically be a mercenary of sorts, but she isn't that edgy, worn-out ex-soldier stereotype used for nearly every mercenary in the movies. Her ex-military background is only a hint of who she is, and she dropped out of the Quinverse equivalent of the Academy to start her security company. But that hint, that vibe, is still there. I don't have a specific accent preference for Rhea, though I always kind of pictured her as a generic American. If you wish to try out for her part and your accent happens to be from a different continent or a different region of the US, that's perfectly acceptable, though I never really pictured her with a southern drawl. That would be... odd. This is Reese. He's a working class bloke from the UK who... Well, if I told you more, it'd be spoilers. He's very enthusiastic and friendly, if a bit unpredictable at times. Think Gary King from The World's End, Dave Lister from Red Dwarf, with a dash or two of Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean and Lord Flashheart from Black Adder. He's the sort of goes down to the pub and greets his friends with a hearty oi oi! Maybe not a football hooligan, but he'd blend in if he decided to hang with them. He doesn't have to be from England. If you want to make him Scottish, Irish, or, I don't know, Welsh, that's cool. Just as long as he isn't too posh or toffee-nosed, and the accent isn't so thick that the audience can't tell what he's saying. This is Trixie. She's a lab assistant for Quinn's mentor, known only as the Professor. I've already cast his part, but I'm not saying who. I want to keep that for a surprise, because it's totally awesome he said yes. Trixie's a Venusian, and while she may come off as a bit airheaded and girlish, she's actually just really friendly and upbeat. She's very smart, trust me. She has all of two lines, but I still need someone to say them. There is one other character whose model I haven't built yet. His name is Captain Robinson, and he captains a ship that robs other ships. I hesitate to call him a space pirate because I don't want people going all, Arr, a vast ye scurvy swab. He's not that kind of pirate. In fact, he sees himself as a noble spaceship captain who just happens to be on the wrong side of the law. If you give me your best John Sheridan, Jean-Luc Picard, Ed Mercer, or Benjamin Sisko, that's what I'm after. His nationality and ethnicity are both not set in stone since I haven't made the character's model yet, so go nuts. 
He actually only has four lines and about seven sentences total. I've offered the part to two people already, one a rather well-known YouTube atheist, and the other two, well, Mark Hamill on Twitter. He hasn't responded yet, but hey, it was worth a try, right? Either of those gentlemen has first refusal, but as of now, the part is still open. Next, a few disclaimers. First, this is not a small project. The script is, no joke, 43 pages long. It's in script form, so there's a lot of dead space, especially if a character's line is a single sentence, but it's still 43 pages. If you try out for Quinn, Rhea, or Reese, you will be committing to a rather large amount of dialogue, and it's possible that we'll need to talk in real time on Skype while you record in order for me to properly fill the role of director. Second, this project is very important to me. It's important that the final product be something of quality. And as such, if all you want is to be in one of my animations, but you really can't act for crap, I'd prefer you didn't apply for the job. Unless it's Trixie or Captain Robinson, one of the smaller parts, I guess. And if your microphone is crapola with lots of background hiss or hum, or if you're recording in a room with a ton of echo, that'll be a problem. Also a problem is if your bass and treble settings are way off. I can clean up some noise, but if the audio quality isn't, well, decent to begin with, there's a chance I can't use it. I've set up an email address, quinredshift at gmail.com, link in the description. Send me a brief audition as an attachment, preferably in MP3 format, though waves are acceptable. Or if you have a link to your own private YouTube video audition, that could work too. You can choose whatever you like. Make something up, do a scene from a famous movie, whatever. Just make sure it's long enough and dramatic enough that I can evaluate your acting ability. If I want to offer you a part, I will contact you back after I've evaluated the auditions. I'll hold any decision for, let's call it two weeks after this video goes public, so get your sample in quickly. And until next time, fellow space travelers, thanks.